speed. I've got 1118 on the PKE. 2.5 GEVs on the Geiger meter. Hey, Ghost Heads. It's Heidi from Channeling Spirits. We've covered lots of ghostbusting gear from the first film, but we also wanted to dive into its slimy sequel. Before we begin, there are roughly three pronunciations of the Gigameter's prefix. Giga, Giga, and Jiga. Gigawatts! Since Egon says, Gigameter, that's what we'll be using. But before we get to the device, we have to talk about slime. Slime! Slime! Slime, 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 It wasn't slime. It was ooze. While the first film had ectoplasm and Peter Venkman experiencing actual physical contact, slime was never intended as a focal point of the film. But ooze and slime was a hit in the 80s. A year after Ghostbusters debuted, He-Man released the evil horde slime pit. Two other childhood staples followed suit in 1987, with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles retro mutagen ooze and the real Ghostbusters ectoplasm. But in the August 5th, 1988 draft, there wasn't any mention of slime or slimer. However, Ray and Egon have discovered a psychomagnetic force. Psycho what? Psychomagnetic. Nope, not psychomagnetic, psychomagnetic. Spangler states, we've discovered a new energy composed of PKE antiparticles. I call it the psychomagnetic force, and I've been able to detect it everywhere I've looked. Like in the final film, the trio arrive at where the runaway buggy stopped. When the PKE meter doesn't detect anything, Spengler suggests using the Geiger meter. Ray explains, Egon and I have been working on it. It measures psychomagnetic energy in GEVs, giga electron volts. After digging a hole in 6th Avenue, Ray doesn't get sent down. Instead, they lower the Geiger meter, which after a bright flash, they find it half melted and fried to a crisp. They explain that negative human emotions actually generate measurable amounts of psychomagnetic force. Jason Locke, who is Vigo the Carpathian in a modern disguise, reads 130 GEVs on the Geiger meter, while a normal person reads at three. This was changed in the final film when 2.5 GEVs was unusual. 2.5 GEVs on the Geiger meter. By the September 29th, 1988 draft, Slimer and Slime were finally in the script. The more familiar psychomagnetic involvement was introduced. They used the word several times throughout the film. Psychomagnetic. 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 But what is it? Unlike psychokinetic energy, psychomagnetic isn't used in parapsychology. It appears to be a portmanteau of psyche, magnetis, and ether. Essentially, the mind attracting or influencing the atmosphere or aura. Does anybody speak English here? Uh, yeah, you, you, Your Honor. See, what we're trying to tell you is like all the bad feelings, I mean, all the hate, the anger and violence of this city is turning into this sludge. The September 29th, 1988 draft similarly says the ghost energy we're seeing now is a manifestation of the same kind of bad vibes that brought down every great civilization in history. Slime became essential to the plot and would later spill over into the real Ghostbusters. In the episode, Partners in Slime, Peter covers himself in the ooze to be smuggled into Ghost Town. I collected it last year after we battled Vigo the Carpathian. It's psychoreactive slime. But rather than pink slime, it's yellow. In 2009, Ghostbusters the video game also introduced green and black slime. 
There's blue slime, pink slime, yellow slime, but every ghost in here is coated with black slime. It turns out psychomagnetheric slime didn't come from nasty New Yorkers, but was the byproduct of a juvenile slore who had been imprisoned. Many shubs and zools knew what it was to be roasted in the depths of the slore that day, I can tell you. The slime was pumped into the sewers by Evo Shandor and later used by Vigo. Viggy, 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 you have been a bad monkey. The Geiger meter is featured several times throughout the film, including at Dana's apartment, in the courtroom, while going to Orifors, at the Manhattan Museum of Art, and searching for the River of Slime. In a deleted scene atop the Statue of Liberty, Spangler exclaims, We got full power! In the Ghostbusters 2 novelization by Ed Naha, the Geiger meter is first used when Dana visits Egon in the Advanced Institute. It is only described as a small black box, and when examining where the carriage stopped, it began to click wildly and the GEV indicator shot into the red zone and stuck there. Oddly, the Geiger meter in the Ghostbusters 2 puzzle book and coloring book were closer to the novelization description. But in Now Comics, the real Ghostbusters starring in Ghostbusters 2, it looked essentially like its film counterpart. Stephen Dane, who designed the Proton Pack, Ghostbusters Trap, Ecto-1, and most of the Ghostbusters equipment, also provided concept art for the Geiger meter. One design resembled a weed eater or a mind sweeper, while the other had extending pincher-like sensors. The latter may have been what inspired Kenner's ghost grab a meter, which claims it was seen in the movie. On creating the props, Stephen Dane said, I would draw this stuff up. I configured the whole thing in detail to make it something you'd really build in order to detect certain frequencies or whatever the presence of the ghost would be. And the final prop was definitely built from a household item, possibly something the boys in gray would have had lying around. The body was a power scrubber and buffer by the Redmond Corporation. A plastic dome with spinning lights was added, as were a pair of motorized condenser microphones. It was built by modern props and also showed up in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Operation Blue, an LA Transit promotional video, and in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. But how exactly does it work? Well, there is a correlation between ionization rates and psychomagnetic energy fields. Heightened emotional states increase body temperatures, which release ionizing radiation into the environment. Negative human emotions can materialize as viscous psychoreactive plasm. Mood slime. Psychomagnetic slime in its natural state is largely basic with a high pH. If you have two oxygen molecules, the ionizing radiation from a person causes one hydrogen proton to bond and create hydronium and hydroxide. The more hydroxide, the more basic the plasm becomes and the larger the psychomagnetic energy field. Proximity, personality, and the volume of psychomagnetic slime all factor into its potency. For example, while Ray was in the courtroom, he was unaffected, but Judge Wexler's aggressive tendencies were amplified. As Ray got closer to the sample, his anger increased, and he had to be pulled away from it. At that distance, Egon wasn't affected, but when they were submerged in it, even his hostility increased until his clothes were removed. Hmm. You're not sleeping with it, are you, Ray? Psychomagnetic slime creates a feedback loop. The slime produces heightened emotional states, which increases body temperature, that creates ionizing radiation and hydroxides, 
which feed the slime. You mean this stuff actually feeds on bad vibes? Like a cop in a donut factory. When these ionizations happen, photons are released. These photons travel through the glass of the Geiger meter and collide with a silicon photomultiplier. The silicon photomultiplier is a photon counter made of multiple avalanche photodiode pixels operating in Geiger mode. The avalanche is outputted as a current pulse and displays as a series of LEDs, moving ears, and a digital readout. Once an ectoplasmic manifestation has entered the corporeal plane, the PKE meter allows one to track its residual trail. The Geiger meter acts as a preliminary detector of ionizing energy measured in Geiger electron volts. To give some baselines, room temperature thermal energy of a molecule is 0.04 electron volts. Visible light photons are 1.5 to 3.5 electron volts. Ionizing energy of atomic hydrogen, 13.6 electron volts. High energy diagnostic medical X-ray photons, 0.02 mega electron volts. Energy from nuclear alpha decay, 2 to 10 mega electron volts. While psychomagnetheric slime often ranges from 1 to 2 giga electron volts. And while using silicon photomultipliers to detect ghosts might sound like science fiction, actual research was conducted on this in 2010. Dr. Gary E. Schwartz conducted experiments measuring photon sums when a spirit was invited and 10 non-invited control experiments. The results? Photons were significantly higher in the invited spirit sessions. But what do you think? Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe. Your methods are sloppy and your conclusions are highly questionable. You are a poor scientist, Dr. Finkel. If you liked this video and think we deserve it, You're nothing but an unstable short chain molecule! Please subscribe. For those interested in blueprints of our Ghostbusters equipment, check out the link to our official merchandise. Select Patreon tiers, get 5 to 10% off. As always, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. I'm Heidi with Channeling Spirits, and thanks for watching. Psychomagnetheric, 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 what, what?